are going to talk about the live music district gospel concert. And with us is Ms. Jamie Bagu of the Culture Division in the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts. Good morning and welcome. How Good are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thanks. Um, so the live music district was announced as part of government's 2018 budget and it was launched on March 1st. That's right. That's an initiative through the Ministry of Planning through the Creative um, TT Company and their subsidiary Music TT. And they will be um, hosting, well, they're not necessarily hosting, but it is an initiative that's catering for upcoming musicians. So the plan is for them to be performing at various um, venues throughout Woodbrook. And we have an event coming up on Thursday, Holy yes. Thursday. Yes, this Thursday we have Live at Lunch. It is a part of um, the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts support for the Music District um, for, with the, with in conjunction with the Port of Spain City Corporation. Mm -hmm. And it's at 12 o'clock at Woodford Square. We are looking to have performers such as Nihelet Blackman, Nikita Gats Vidoli, um, Jira Nurse, Chris Tambu Herbert, uh, yeah, and a few others. Mm -hmm. You say it's a district gospel concert. Yes. Well, this, this month's theme is gospel, right? It's something we hope to be ongoing throughout the, the time of the live music district, which runs until June. So each month we will have a, um, a different theme. So, you know, my one month we might have a classical music um, genre. Uh, we also wish to incorporate people like such as the music festival winners and school mm -hmm. choirs. We have our national performance entities such as the National Steel Symphony Orchestra and the National Philharmonic Orchestra. I don't know if you know about the Brown Bag series that we usually ho host mm -hmm. during July, August, yes. So it will be, it's similar to that, that we usually have at Nalis, where you come with your lunch. We're encouraging persons to come with their lunch because, you know, Port of Spain is a very active city at lunchtime. And we want to just regenerate the city. That's part of our initiative. It's not the first part time we're doing something like this. As I mentioned before, the Brown Bag series is held at Nalis. And um, we just thought to use Woodford Square as it's so historical and monumental, an integral part to Port of Spain. And how long is this event planning to, to go for? Uh, well, I think until June, up until for now, we'll see what happens later on. But for now, we'll continue for the run of the district. We talk about reinvigorating Port of Spain. Port of Spain. People <laughs> have been complaining about Port of Spain <laughs> and the condition of Port of Spain mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. how, how can this contribute mm -hmm. to the reinvigoration of the capital city? Well, one, we have lots of squares, beautiful green places, spaces in the, the, the Port, Port of Spain district, and they're underutilized. So we're trying to encourage persons, you know, to walk about a little more, see the architecture. I know people say oh, we have buildings that are dilapidated, etc., but you can still, still see some beauty in it. You can sit down and appreciate what we have in nature. Right now, Pui trees are blossoming. So, you know, if you sit down in Woodford Square and have lunch and you're in the shade of a poetry and you see the fountain and you're seeing people interacting with each other and, and you're getting some fresh air because we are always in an air-conditioned building, you know, getting more oxygen, more sunlight, that vitamin thing to us, vitamin D, which is vital to us, you know, that helps us. So I think it would help um, reduce some stress levels as well. You know, you get away from your office for lunch, spend a wonderful hour, get some beautiful music, enrich your soul, enhance your spirit, you know. Things like that, yes. Yep. Trinidad and Tobago has about 1.3 million people. Mm -hmm. No, you can't please everybody in Trinidad no, we and cannot. Tobago. <laughs> How do you see this concert or mm -hmm. this initiative mm -hmm. helping Trinidad and Tobago move forward? Well, one, we'll be seeing ourselves. We'll be hearing ourselves. We'll begin to believe in ourselves a little more. And we'll be able to know ourselves some more. Because I'm sure a lot of people, when you see the artists that we'll be bringing up there, you would see that people think... Yes, we know we are creative, uh, creative people, but they don't realize exactly how creative we are. Yeah, so I think music is the first way to start it. It's also a step in, um, in creating Port of Spain as a creative city under the UNESCO platform worldwide. They have cities where they focus on an aspect, whether it's food, whether it's music, whether it's art. And this is also kind of a tester for that because the ministry, as I said, is not new to these types of initiatives. Previously, we had a musical and heritage walk in Belmont a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, and that was a pilot, it was a, it was a test to see if it can be done. And it can, and Woodbrook was one of the places earmarked to be another part of the musical city. So if we are looking at falling into that mold, basically, and, and getting Port of Spain reinvigorated, if it becomes a creative city, you know, when p tourists come, when the cruise ships, we have an influx of tourists this year, when the cruise ships come and they take a walk through the, the beautiful Port of Spain, they have lunch in, a, in, in, in a, one of our green spaces and they hear our wonderful artists, our talent. So, and they go back and spread the word for us, help us spread the word at least. But Port of Spain is always so busy. 
Why yes. should people come into Port of Spain on a Thursday at lunchtime when there but is they probably But they are already traffic? in Port of Spain. That's the point. So they don't necessarily have to come in for it, but I would like for that to happen. But the main thing is we have so many workers in mm. Port of Spain. And lunchtime, as we say, is very busy. Nothing is wrong if we take a, a breather, a half hour. You don't have as many whole hours as if you don't want to. But at least we have a live at lunch in Woodford Square that you know every Thursday, a certain Thursday, every third Thursday in the month, I believe, um, we will be having this event, at least up until June. And, and in the interim, it is mm. to target the people who work in Port of Spain? In the interim, yes. At some point, we hope to be roving. We're not sure yet, as I say. As you know, the finances are not... Yeah. <laughs> but why Port of Spain? Why not somewhere else? Why, why, why is Port of Spain now and why not somewhere else? Port of Spain now because its live music district is in Port of Spain. So we are ta ta um, collaborating with the ministry, with, with Creative TT and Music TT. So we are keep staying in the same area and then eventually move out, move forward. But is it something that we can see developing across Trinidad and I Tobago? really hope so. That, that is what we are discussing and we are hoping to see, to see it move forward. Because from what I understand it to be one of the main aspects of this initiative is mm -hmm. to give local artists mm -hmm. uh, marketing for their music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why can't they do it themselves? Some of them don't know. We have a lack of market, um, entertainment managers. People think they know all about it, but some of them, yeah, they really need to help, especially the up-and-coming ones. Remember, we say it's for upcoming artists. We're focusing on them. Yes, we will have more of the established artists performing ex as well, but we want to focus on on developing the capacity of these youngsters, the younger ones, the younger generation of musicians who are coming up. And Music TT, I believe, has a platform for them so that when they register online on Music TT's website, um, they get an, like an EPAC. So, and, and that is what they can use thereafter to move forward. Okay, so they use this initiative mm -hmm. and get their music out there. Mm -hmm. Are we going to work with them after for them to continue development? Well, yeah, that is one, that is one way, but the purpose of this is to highlight them so that we hope businesses and other persons will hire them as well. It's not just for the government to be, hi to be showing mm -hmm. people all the time, right? It is a partnership in essence. We are partnering, three entities of the government are, are, are partnering, the corporation and two ministries, and we are hoping now that private Trinidad and Tobago, business, the business persons in Trinidad and Tobago who have the spaces and who have the wherewithal, they will then see it is important. They would see that the impact that this will have and can have for them and for the country on a, on a whole, and then move it forward and hire the, the, these youngsters. You talked about not having the necessary funding to expand right now. Mm -hmm. But why should we as a people spend money to do something like this? Why not? People would argue that we have other things more important to deal with. Like? Crime fighting initiatives, right. developing schools. So, okay, yes, that's true. But you have to remember, in every recession, in every hard time, in every depression, the thing that has brought that has made people resilient has always been their culture. Yes? And music, art, literature, we may not be thinking it's important, but it very much is so. Because it's through, those, through, those, through that medium, we find ourselves, one, we become, we become much more creative because you're forced to do something without the funding, right? But I, I find we shouldn't have to be doing that all the time. We shouldn't have to be, but, but this is a platform for us to be showing persons this is what we are capable of. This is what we can do. This is what you need to know about ourselves. We need to know ourselves, and as I told you before, see ourselves for us to be able to appreciate ourselves a lot more. We shouldn't wait for somebody to come and say, oh, you all are good, you know, maybe you should be doing this. We're already doing it. So let's just continue, and let's just give each other the support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, you know, mm -hmm. what is it <laughs> like for you as a woman in Trinidad and Tobago right now? You know, we at CTV, mm -hmm. hashtag Press to Progress, the entire month of March. Hmm, that's a little, <laughs> it's double-edged, <laughs> because one, I've been empowered to be doing a lot of work, and when I say work, not just um, in terms of work in exchange for a salary, no. I, I am in the creative industries, I usually work in the background. Just this weekend, I worked with um, a lovely event, New Fire Festival, I managed their concert on Saturday night, and it was heartwarming to see the respect that a lot of other female artists are getting now. It was heartwarming to see that they respected me as a stage manager, somebody who was in charge of them. When I said that, you know, it was a main, a lot of um, local groups, yes, and a lot of them were men. And to be a stage manager, you have to have a lot of um, gumption, is the word I want to use, <laughs> because sometimes you have to get them in order. Mm -hmm. And they understood that. So, you know, 
um, working in, as a woman now in Trinidad and Tobago is um, we, we still have far to go, but mm -hmm. we have made some progress and I'm a little happy with it for now. Yep. Give us the information again one mm -hmm. more time. About well, this it's this Thursday at 12 o'clock at Woodford Square, live at lunch. Bring your lunch and come, bring your colleagues and come and have a lovely time with our gospel artists, Jira and Nurse amongst them. And um, we hope to see them there. See yeah, Woodford there. Square, 12 noon. 12 security noon. is something that people are concerned mm -hmm. about all the time. Well, we always have security when we have our live events. So, so yes. you can expect it to be... Uh, a safe event and, be a safe and remember book? when you're going as well to make sure and walk with your plastic bag to throw your garbage because that is something that so we much. in Trinidad Actually, tend to do. I would like to encourage persons to work with the reusable plastics if they have to work with plastic at all. Walk with your reusable containers and as you said walk with your garbage bags so that we leave the city as we see it, as we found it clean. Yeah. Because the same people who littering most times are the same people complaining and we need to get rid of That's that right. mentality That's in Canada right. and Tobago. Exactly. Thank you very much, Miss Jamie Bagu, Thank you very much. Cultural Program Coordinator mm -hmm. at the Culture Division of the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts for coming in and chatting with us about this concert coming up on Thursday, 12 noon at Woodford Cafe.